Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Today's project is going to be showing you why I love to do upholstery and why I'm drawn so much to uh, upholstered pieces, some of you might know. So um, what I, I feel like I'm on the Food Network, what I have for you today, chefs, what I have today is this antique footstool that has a very traditional needlepoint cover with fringe. It, um, don't even think, it, I believe you if you tell me this does not remind you of the dog footstool from Beauty and the Beast with the fringe. Um, and I got this from um, Bishop's Antiques in Harbor Springs when I was up north this weekend for the holiday. But the reason that I was drawn to this piece, and I haven't cleaned it yet, that'll be step one, is can you see here, there are, there's evidence of these different layers of fabric. So it, it's a little bit difficult to see on the video, but I count at least three. So we've got the needlepoint, this blue and purple tapestry looking one, and then there's one more, which I'm guessing is probably, if not original, close to original. So I am going to clean this up and in a couple of step-by-step -step videos, do a reveal so we can together look at the fabric underneath. So stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just clean it up. It's pretty, I mean, it's dusty, it's dirty, it's been in an antique store. So this is just a wet paper towel with a little bit of Murphy's oil soap. Um, it's really nothing fancy. Um, I'm just going to clean up the wood a little bit. So it's going to need some repairs. This, um, this rung is a little bit loose, but I'm really just wiping the cobwebs off of it and um, just making it so it's a little bit more pleasant uh, to work with. Okay, so like I said, nothing fancy. But now it's clean, free of cobwebs and dust and debris. Now, the owner of Bishop's Antiques in Harbor Springs, which um, if you're ever in Harbor Springs, you should totally go, she's a delight, uh, told me that this came from um, an estate in uh, Gross Point. So this is a Detroit area piece. And there's no markings on it. I mean, it's definitely antique. You can tell by the joinery and the construction. Uh, we'll see, there might be some, um, some markings on it once I get the upholstery off. So the first order of business is going to be to remove the fringe and the needle point that are the uh, outermost layer. And to do that, I'll just use a, um, a straight edge uh, to pop the staples out and um, it's easy as pie. I'm so excited for this. I can't wait to show you. Okay, stay tuned. Now for this piece, actually the staples are not in terribly securely just because there are so many layers of fabric. So um, just a pair of needle nose pliers for most of these staples is all it takes to remove them. You can see how easily they're coming out. Um, I can use a, um, uh, a straight screwdriver as well, um, but this doesn't even really require that. It's just coming out super easily with the needle nose pliers. Okay, so I've gotten most of the staples off. Sorry, that's very close. Hello. Oh, but I have to show you. Aren't these amazing? There's a lot of sadness in the world right now, but pineapple earrings make me happy. I got these from Market Mercado in um, Indian River. So go check them out if you're up north. So the first layer of staples I almost completely got off and it's a little hard to see here. Maybe I'll do this one. Um, but you can tell that the blue layer, which is the second layer of fabric, has been affixed with tacks, which is much more traditional than the staples that affixed the outer layer. So let's see, now some of this, it is glued together. You may need to get a X-Acto knife. Let's see here. Nope, it's gonna come apart. I'm being very, very gentle. So the outer layer, this needlepoint layer, um, there's some hot glue uh, that was used to attach the fringe and that is adhering to the blue layer. So can you see this okay? Let's see. Being very careful to not damage the blue layer. All I'm doing is just very gently removing the upholstery layer. I'm gonna use these pliers here to just nip at the thread. 
from the blue layer, which is layer number two. And you know, you can use a, um, I don't have one handy or else I would grab it. You can use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to separate these. If it doesn't come uh, easily apart, then I'll leave it and use something because I, I really don't want to damage any of this fabric. Because, as you may know, one of the things that we do here at Dee Dee's is to reuse any uh, fabric that we find that's in salvageable condition. I hand wash it with a special detergent that's made for delicate fabrics. And then our very uh, talented fabric artisan, my mother-in-law, Marilyn, that several of you have met, um, she works the store frequently. Um, she turns it into terrific, beautiful, amazing, one of a kind to throw pillows. Okay, so here we go. I believe we have enough of this up. Oh, can you see the dust that's coming out of it? There we go. And you want to be really careful, I should say, if you're not used to doing um, antique upholstery. Right now, I just have nitrile exam gloves on, just, you know, like the kind a doctor would wear or a nurse. Um, I really probably should be using something uh, that's a little more protective um, because these tacks are sharp and they're tiny and they hide. So please be careful if you're working with uh, older upholstery. Okay, here we go. So this is, that was indeed applied. I'm just popping these tacks out by tacks. This is the blue and purple layer underneath. It is filthy, I will not lie to you, um, but I have a suspicion that this will clean up really beautifully. The problem with this, and what really breaks my heart, I don't know if you can see how uh, how bold the colors are here, which would have been wrapped around the footstool where it didn't get any use. Um, this is where it did get used, and so consequently the colors have faded. It's also, like I said, quite dirty. Now, here is um, some of the original cotton batting. Um, this will look familiar to anyone. It's this felted cotton that's in all of these traditional uh, upholstery pieces. And here, it's gonna take me just a minute to carefully remove this, but you can already begin to see this burgundy velvet underneath. That is probably as close to the original fabric as we can find, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm wearing a mask because um, it was so dusty um, that uh, it was making it difficult to breathe. Just as I suspected, here you've got the original horse hair. So you know that this is authentically old and authentically um, upholstered when you have the original horse hair, which I'm going to preserve. And the other thing that I'll point out here, whew, on the blue fabric, it's stitched together beautifully. So now I'm wondering if this bottom fabric, um, uh, it's interesting. I'm not sure if this was a designed as a ticking fabric or a base layer, but whoever did this blue layer um, just upholstered the corners so beautifully and these sort of decorative round headed upholstery tacks were used as opposed to the flat head, more traditional kind, which weren't designed to be viewed. So on the corner, you've got these round headed tacks that look a little bit like um, rivets, sort of decorative, uh, this decorative detail. Um, but here you have it. And then once I succeed in removing 
uh, the pieces, the tacks here at the bottom, uh, will get down to what's underneath. Um, there's just a piece of wood here, um, so it's not jute webbing like you might expect. Um, but this is just, I don't know, this has been here for so long. It just, it gives me goosebumps. It's so, so cool. So as I suspected, this wood is very old and very brittle. So you can see that just as I was working, uh, a piece of the wood has just completely splintered off. So I am, I am being so careful and putting hardly any pressure on this when I pull because I want to protect the wood as much as possible. So I just want to lift it and it is, I actually, the noise you hear is my air purifier. So in addition to a mask, I've turned on my air purifier because uh, it's quite dusty. You can see, I'll take a picture of the workspace in a second. But this is, so there's more of the original cotton batting. And all we have here whew, is, uh, it looks like a piece of plywood or a thin piece of wood. Um, that is attached to the frame, the felted cotton, then the original fabric, then the layer of coarse hair, more cotton, and the blue. So this piece has undergone uh, just several transformations, and I just think it's amazing. I think it's incredible. So um, I'm going to get this all removed and cleaned up, and we're going to be able to start from scratch. I'll repair um, the loose pieces to it. We're gonna get it sanded and patched up and give it new life. Um, I hope so much that you have enjoyed this and have enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about why I love to work with old upholstered pieces. It's just, I don't know if these pieces could talk, right? The stories that they could tell, it's really remarkable. Okay, until next time, everybody, thanks.